Hello Himo friends and welcome to this new video. Do you know that I can tell you which kind of person you probably are depending from which kind of manual or tradition you like the most? You don't believe me? Well, at least let me try out. People who end up falling in love with Fiore are those people who are more into the romantic idea of the night. They generally end up buying armor at some point and working over that huge part of the manual. They also tend to be lesser competitive if compared to other longsword students while talking about tournaments. They generally like to reflect their love in history into their training equipment, which tends to look halfway between an historical kit and a modern HEMA training gear. Theorists also take for granted that you know every single Italian term of their manual, and so they are all about Volta of the hand, volta stabile, then you cut your friend dente toward dente del sanghiaro, the primo magistro of uh, the incrosario in punta di spada, and whatever. And uh, you don't understand anything, but you also know that if you ask something, it will take hours. And so it is better to avoid any question. Yeah. Some Fiore people tend to be rather dogmatic. And if you put the wrong foot in front while landing this cambiar di punta, they will probably show up in front of your door, at night, with a shotgun, asking you to stop doing it. People who enjoy Fiore tend to end up enjoying cross-training and multidisciplinary approaches to fencing a lot, rather than strictly focusing on a single weapon or a couple of them. So much so that sometimes they start talking for hours and hours and hours about the beauty of the system where the longsword actions are taught in the dagger section and the third master of Tutta Volta of Colpo di Villano, Mezza Porta di Pangrattato. Oh my god, please help. Fiore de Liberi lovers tend to be among those Hima people who like to also reenact the period of reference of the manual. And also, because of this, they are among the poorest HEMA practitioner, as they never end up satisfying their needs for swords, trainers, simulators, protections, armors, historical clothes, and so on. A style made of simple direct actions, and of parry posts and close plays, is the signature of the average Fiore Fencer. People who fall in love with 133 tend to be highly creative on average. They tend to be people who love having innovative new ideas, that love to shine among the others thanks to their smartness and unique approaches. The rather dogmatic and obscure nature of the manual leaves these people with enough freedom of expression to satisfy their desires. Many interpretations of the place tend to be possible because of this and the rather poor quality of the images. 133 people are obsessed by shield strikes. Sometimes, after counterbinding you, they start running at you with tiny little steps and their little shield extended, dilated pupils always smiling, their inner demon whispers them to stomp that damn dish on your one but it rarely work as they want. When the 133 fencer sees the shield strike failing once again, he enters into a focused inner rage. He starts binding your sword without mercy, right, left, above, below. He doesn't know why he is doing it, but he does it anyway. Even if they like to compete in sparring and in comparing new smart ideas about interpretations and technique, they tend to be among the lesser competitive HEMA fencers tournament-wise. 133 people tend to be a lot into history, and they are among those HEMA people who love reenacting the most their historical period of reference. The approach to practice tends to be more oriented toward minimal gear and slow, relaxed activities. While this is not necessarily always the case, it is true for the majority of the practitioners. 133 people are obsessed by bind plays, more than any other bind-centric tradition or system. People who fall in love with the Lichtenauer tradition tend to share two main characteristics. They tend to be competitive enough and they tend to enjoy highly organized and schematic approaches to study, life, and of course, fencing. 
while being the most practiced Hema style around the world, which introduces people to Hema in general, the Lichtenauer tradition highly dedicated slash specialized student tends to be extremely schematic, logical and organized. The if-then-else approach to fencing suggested by Lichtenauer makes those people fall in love with it. While being in general extremely practical, those people tend to become too obsessed by techniques sometimes, and they end up focusing into training minor nuances and low percentage actions just for the sake of the need to check all the boxes of the manual. A well-known Hima legend says that the first Hima fencer who started practicing Lichtenauer after 20 years of practice ended up mastering all the uses of the master strikes. One day he managed to land all of them in a single tournament boat. It was in that precise moment that a giant portal opened up in front of him. A booming voice filled the fencing hall. You are ready, Johannes. While he walked calmly into the light. Since that moment no one seen that fencer again. But the legend goes on saying that before he traveled through the portal, the master strikes were four, not five. Anyway, this Hima culture is so widespread that it ended up creating two subcultures which slightly differentiate from the pure Lichtenauer student. The dogmatic Lichtenauer student and the pragmatic Lichtenauer student. The dogmatic tend to focus on words, semantics and on strictly relating every single bit of the manual with their own technique. They always counterattack instead of pairing, they always try to gain the initiative and so on. The pragmatic instead tends to look at the manual as a friend rather than a god and uh, tends to mix its teaching with, oh my god, I'm going to say it, Olympic fencing concepts generally with a focus on epee fencing. This makes them more balanced fencers, but also the most competitive and twitchy one around. People who study Verdadera Destreza tend to be, conceptually speaking, a mixture between the archetypes of Lichtenauer fencers and 133 fencers. Who loves Verdadera Destreza likes its precise approach, its highly organized way of dealing with situations and its focus on geometry and form. At the same time, these same people tend to also be extremely creative and lesser interested in competitions. While being among the lesser competitive Hima fencers, Destreza students love to give proof of their own skills while trying to stick to the principles of their method, especially by fencing against each other. The threat of fencers are in love with history. While not as much as 133 or fewer practitioners, on average, it is a relevant component of the motivations that keep them practicing. Verdadera de Stretha is fun because it is the only system in which to land a simple attack, you just need to do 45 different movements, which can be countered in 45 different ways, 46 of them being arm grabs, sword grabs and disarms. The Stretha people enjoy two things in life, wine and the 90 degree angles, and they are all out of wine. The Stretha people tend to enjoy bind play, disarms and elegant movements. They love to look tricky and smart while keeping their aesthetical composure. People who love the Bolognese fencing tradition tend to move as if everyone is looking at them every time. This of course before getting in contact with the opponent. Then there is usually some powerful exchange of chaotic movements which ends up in a pompous, aesthetically pleasing retreat out of distance. Bolognese fencers love powerful actions, big archered blows and strong beats on the opponent's sword. They love to play with a mixture of smart angles, speed and pure strength. Bolognese people love history and while not being reenactors, generally speaking, they study and read an abnormal quantity of material about that historical period. Bolognese students, as their fewer counterpart, 
love to study many different weapons and many different weapon combinations, while most of them tend to generally focus mainly on the side sword alone. Bolognese fencers like to show off and to look good. Proud chest, high chin, flamboyant training gear. They are one of the most balanced Hima cultures in terms of competition, with some of them competing and some not, with most of them passing between a highly competitive phase and a non-competitive one a few years from one another. The average Bolognese fencer believes in himself and in his fencing, sometimes rightfully so, sometimes too much, exceeding his own skills, and uh, some other times, so much so that he convinces himself of having even more skills than he actually has, thus winning against stronger, faster and more skilled opponents. Who studies Italian rapier tend to be, apparently, a calm person, generally talkative and eager to approach everyone friendly. They anyway hide their own madness inside, contained in a small sphere stored close to their reptilian brain, which cracks and explodes as soon as they receive a pointy object in their hand. Italian Reaper fencers are very good at what they do, so much so that even the one of them who do not know what they are doing, they do it properly anyway. One moment they lunge like crazy sport saber fencers, then at a sudden they drop on the ground and stab you from below. They are like highly educated monkeys with one single important objective in life, which is stab you. Who studies Italian rapier is mainly focused on the fencing aspect of Hima, generally speaking, studying a lot of Olympic fencing sources too, while not necessarily training this kind of activity. Italian rapier fencers tend to be quite competitive fencers joining competitions regularly. Who studies Italian rapier while being into history for sure doesn't see it as the main driver of their own practice. Stabbing people is instead far more important for them, especially if the other chap doesn't stab you in the meantime too. But even in that case, it's not that bad, right? People who studies Joachim Meyer are among the most interesting kind of people in the Hima environment. Among this kind of practitioner, it is possible to find the most variegated ways of training, from minimal gear to full gear to no gear at all. Meyer people are on average obsessed with many different weapons of their system, but all of them end up loving the lesser cool among them, the Dusak. If you join a Hima event and you find two people fencing with only the mask on, fencing like crazy with some weird letter things, those are Mayorists. Mayorists tend to be that kind of weird intellectual gym bro. They like protein and also to know a lot of things. They can squat 220 kilograms of books that they ended up reading yesterday, by the way. But all Mayorists love two things in particular puffy pants and giving specific names to movements. There is always a something how, which you never heard of, that the mayorist knows. A true mayorist is able to complete the mayor square in lesser than two seconds, and they can do it by hitting all the quadrants with the true edge, the false edge, the flat, and the power of chaos. Everyone who faces a mayorist in sparring can't remember what happened because of their speed, their power, and the power of chaos that they can unleash throughout their never-ending sequence of blows. Their combination of blows are so long that having a percentage of double hits inferior to 98% while facing them is considered pretty good. Mayorists also like to join international clubs and associations so to be always in contact with each other, sharing stories about that time I have landed 562 blows in a single combination of attacks and similar things. Well, people, I don't know if you are in one of these categories, but if the answer is yes, write it down in the comment section. 
As always, remember to check my Patreon if you want to join my community and to receive in exchange some of my contents. Thanks for watching as always and uh, see you next time.